Hey guys, it's Paul from Online Sax Academy, and in today's lesson we're doing the classic Herbie Hancock tune, Cantaloupe Island. So before we get started, you can get yourself the free PDF and backing tracks that accompany today's lesson, and they're down in the link below. And if you enjoy today's lesson and you find those resources useful, you can now also buy me a coffee and your support is very much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future lessons. So in today's lesson, we're going to be taking that tune in three ways. First of all, as a beginner version, we're just going to be playing the melody just once through nice and slowly at 80 BPM. And then for the intermediate version, we've got one chorus of solo, and I'll be explaining a bit more about that later on. And then finally, for the advanced version, again, it's just going to be one chorus of solo, but with some more advanced techniques. So as I said, Cansu Island was written by Herbie Hancock. It was written in 1964, and it's what's known more as a modal tune, meaning it's not using uh, much functional harmony. There aren't any two five ones. It's only 16 bars long with a simple melody that is using the concert F minor pentatonic scale. So for alto saxophones, that's the D minor pentatonic scale. And for tenor saxophones, that's the G minor pentatonic scale. So I'd recommend you warm up on that scale, get to know those notes. And then when you go to play this melody, it's only using notes from that scale and it's going to make it a lot easier. So if you're not familiar with this tune, I'd recommend listening to it a few times first and be able to sing along first before you grab your sax and you're worrying about notes and fingerings and all that stuff. And then when you go to play it, it's going to flow a lot easier. All right, so here's the beginner version at 80 BPM. For the intermediate version, I've tried to limit myself to just three main scales when we're improvising on each of those three different chords. So on alto sax, for that first chord, we're using D minor, or on tenor, that's G minor pentatonic scale. For the second chord, we're using the same scale, but we're flattening the fifth degree, which is the fourth note of the pentatonic, because that second degree is missing in a pentatonic, but you can see which note is flattened here. And then for the third scale, we're using, for alto saxophones, it's a B minor chord, so B minor pentatonic, and for tenor saxophones, E minor chord, so an E minor pentatonic. Now, I did also use the note C sharp for altos or F sharp for tenors, which is the what's known as the ninth, or you can think of it as the second. It's the same note in the scale, really. It's just one whole step above the root. So you should be able to hear that when we hit that in the solo, it has a nice kind of floaty sound to it. Rhythmically, I try to limit myself to no faster than quavers. There are a couple of semi-quavers here and there, but there's no double time lines or anything particularly fast. Now, every chord is four bars long, so I'd recommend you try to do two two-bar phrases on each chord. Now, if you're new to improvising, you can also go through my example solo, and the solo should make more sense now. Now you know which scales I'm using over which chord, and you can see how I'm using those scales, and you can do similar things in your solos. All right, so here's the intermediate version of Cantaloupe Island.
Alright, so for the advanced solo, now on that first chord, I'm using more of the what's called the Dorian mode. Um, but I'm also using little pieces of language that I know that work on minor chords. For the second chord, uh, on alto saxophones, I'm thinking of the F melodic minor scale. Because inside that F melodic minor scale, the fourth chord is B flat 7 with a sharpened 11th, which is the E natural. And that E natural is also found in the Dorian scale earlier, and it's a nice bridge between the two. And for the third chord, again I'm thinking Dorian, so B Dorian for alto saxes and E Dorian for tenor saxes. There is a moment in this solo where I use triplets, but I group them in fours, and it can create a really nice kind of rhythmic effect. Alright, so here's the advanced version of Cantilupe Pylant. So along with last week's tune, Blue Bossa, which is linked down below, Cantaloupe Island is another one that's really great to memorise. It's a typical thing that you can play at a jam session and everyone's going to know. This is in the standard key as well. This tune doesn't really ever get played in other keys. Remember you can get yourself the PDFs and the free backing tracks and performance tracks that accompany this and that's linked down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next week.